And welcome back to another episode of the Outside 50 podcast presented by U.S. Footy News. Here with you, as always, are Rick Shaibani from L.A., Ben Martinez from Austin, and Tara Silkey from Denver. How are you guys doing? Great, Rick. Doing well. Awesome. Really good to hear that. And hope everyone else out there is doing all right. Today we have a guest from the Midwest, which I was just commenting on the other day. We feel like we've neglected the Midwest teams a little bit so far on the podcast, but without further ado, Caitlin O'Malley from Wisconsin. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yeah, glad you could come on board. Um, Yes, so let's just get right into it, Caitlin. Uh, How'd you get started in footy, and how'd you get started in Wisconsin? Uh, So uh, it all started with a guy. Um, I was dating uh, Eric Monroe. I am dating him still. And when I started dating him, he kind of introduced me to the sport. Um, And then he went away on a long trip to Australia. (laughs) And I ended up meeting him there. We traveled for three weeks um, around the eastern coast and kind of got a new taste for the sport when we came back he showed me more of it and I came to practices and games and really got to befriend a lot of the guys on the team um in doing so I realized there was like a big lack of social media for the Wisconsin Wombats and I wanted to amplify that for them and I really just wanted some control over it so I got all the passwords and everything. And I started posting things and getting a little bit more um, promotion for us. And uh, after doing that and some other ideas I had for the team, when it was time to come to re-elections for our board members, um, I ran for president because I just really uh, have a lot of things that I think would move the team forward and help us grow as a new coming team. So that's kind of, where I ended up, and now here we are. That's awesome. So how long have you been president then? So just since January of this year. So our incoming season is like my first season as president. Uh, I was following up Lucas Pillar, who was our president last year. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you also played a little bit down in Chicago as well, right? No, I did not. Um, I actually played only one uh, tournament. It was the regional championship in Denver last year with the Minnesota Freeze, and we actually won. So, uh, yeah, that was cool. But I uh, that was my short lived appearance in footy because it just I just wasn't getting the hang of it, and it was very frustrating to me. And I kind of more prefer the like administrative sideline stuff so i decided to to go where i was needed okay good stuff yeah awesome and um so from an administrative standpoint obviously you guys up in wisconsin hosted nationals a couple years ago back in 2018 and right yeah has that had a really positive effect on recruitment uh like have you guys been able to uh, how have you guys been able to take advantage of that in terms of getting people to join the footy club? So uh, that was like just before I started with the team and started like seeing what was happening. I think that has definitely um, rustled up some interest in the sport. And we've seen a lot of uh, newcomers, new interests, people that are just seeing us playing that want to like check it out. But one of our biggest downfalls, I think, is uh, being in Madison, it's a very like come and go kind of city and people don't always stay for long. So sometimes we get, you know, a lot of great players or some great commitment from a newcomer. And then, you know, they get a more solid job in another city or just, you know, move home for whatever reason. So um, that's been a really hard part of recruitment for us. Uh, we just lost two really great players this last season to other jobs. but. Um, 
yeah, it's been a little bit of a challenge with that, but we're we're coming up with some new ideas that hopefully will be come into effect after quarantine is over. Yeah, Caitlin, just to speak to that, what what are, what are some of the key areas do you feel are going to be of, of benefit to the growth of the club? Um, considering you've got some very well-established clubs around you in, in Chicago and, and Minnesota. Yeah, so one thing I really wanted to do this year that kind of fell through was we were hoping to be featured in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. So I just wanted to get word out that there even is a team in existence. And just to get people questioning, we were going to, you know, throw the footies around and have a walk in the parade and uh, let people just kind of like look us up, come to practices, those kinds of things. Um, I also have some ideas for uh, like a kickoff party and just ways that we can like um, get some sponsorship in the city. So that's kind of still in the works, but we have an awesome bike path that I think I want to set up an informational stand at. And just as people come by, we've got our flag and we've got stuff and we're playing with the footies and just to get some of those more athletic people that maybe aren't, they don't know about it or they don't go that side of the town, but we've got a lot of good fitness going on in Madison. So I'm not worried about it. I just think we've got to get the word out about it. Yeah, and it's kind of a blessing in disguise uh, in a way because, you know, you guys have pretty long winters up there. And, you know, as Tara knows, spring can be deceptive, like when it's actually going to come and the weather is actually going to turn. So, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you guys are still going to have a chance to, you know, play a really quality season and uh, continue the positive momentum heading forward. And from an administrative standpoint, you guys, um, good on you guys for, you know, getting sponsorship uh, sorted out, you know, talking to people uh, and uh, having a, a big season launch. Cause here in LA, we were about to do the season launch. It was like a couple of weeks. I think it was planned for like a couple of weeks after what ended up being the lockdown. So, um, but yeah, like I think you guys have some creative ideas for getting the word out and hopefully the, the good vibes continue. Yeah. Thanks. So, Caitlin, you are a female president, which we don't have a lot of those in um, all across the league. And then you also are not really a huge player in the league. So kind of combining those two things, what do you think is going to be your biggest challenges uh, coming into this new season? Obviously, outside of our current nationwide challenge of COVID. But what do you think are going to be your challenges um, being a female leader and um, also leading a smaller team and just kind of um, not really super engaged in the sport or playing, I guess, at that level? Yeah, so um, I think one of my weaknesses would be that I'm not a player of the sport. And while that uh, might be a disadvantage in some ways of knowing uh, a lot of maybe what's going on, I feel like it's good because I I see things evenly across the team and I really I think it's really important to take everybody's input and we've been really like democratic in that way about voting for things and how we're going to spend our money and trying to keep um I'm just more the spokesperson for the group as opposed to like I'm making all these decisions for everybody um yeah yeah, that's a unique perspective. Awesome. And uh I think it's I think it's definitely good to have people who are, you know, not not separate from the game, but you know, who 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 aren't as biased as other people at the club might be, you know, if there's like a player coach thing going on or but yeah, you know, it, it's good that you're able to take care of a lot of the stuff that can fall by the wayside considering you know, every club's different. Every club has different needs and priorities from an administrative standpoint. And turning the page a little bit here, Caitlin, um, uh, did you guys have your schedule all lined up um, before everything shut down? Like, was how was it looking? Because you guys are in Div 4 and you're you know, going to try to bring a few guys to regionals and nationals, right? Yeah, we are. Um, so we try to send a few guys every uh, regionals and nationals definitely at regionals we try to go um as many guys as we can but uh as far as our schedule for this season it wasn't set yet 
we were about to have that meeting to set those dates. We were sort of waiting to hear from some of the other teams around us, Chicago, Minnesota, Des Moines. Um, and so, so we could line up with them and hopefully do some like player networking. Uh, unfortunately, that team meeting had to be virtual on Zoom. So we didn't set any dates at that time because of the unexpectedness of the next couple of months. Um, yeah, so we do not currently have our season schedule, but we do have our practice ideas and locations. Yeah, that's great. I'm sure there's been a lot of real enthusiasm uh, in the players group this year, and hopefully you guys are continuing to stay fit even during all this uncertainty. Uh, you, you mentioned your positive relationships with the clubs in, in your region. You have Des Moines, Chicago, Minnesota, and those are, you know, solid, well-established clubs. Like, since you guys are so young as a team, um, how, how have those guys helped you out in terms of getting Wisconsin sorted and making sure you guys are doing well? I'd say the Swans are one of our closer teams in terms of the three. Uh, we often are invited to things and they send players to us. We send players to them. We always are like team sharing at events. If they don't have enough guys, like we'll go and play with them. Or um, I think there's definitely a gap to be filled in terms of promoting us a little bit more. But now that we have some of that material and have some of that um, growth, we can do a little bit more with that and hopefully combine with them more and help us both grow together. Yeah, I know uh, Des Moines was planning on hosting the uh, I-35 Cup tournament this year. And that that's a really good, that's a really good thing. Cause like at this rate, you know, we've got a lot of mini tournaments. That's kind of, they're kind of sprouting up every year. It seems like here in the USAFL. So Stuff like that is a great way to kick off the season competitively. And again, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys will continue to grow as, um, as the club grows and matures and uh, gets more recognition. What were your main goals heading into the season in terms of like getting, you know, full lists to go to regionals or uh, getting a certain number of registered players? Like what was the main strategy? Uh. I think our biggest goal is recruitment. We just want to have more guys and more bodies at practices, more people to have the potential that their schedule lines up to go to regionals, to go to games. Um, I think it's hard with the commitment that other people have, work, family, those things. Uh, but we do have a really good solid core of guys. So I think recruitment recruitment's one of the biggest goals this season. Uh, the other goal was merch. I really wanted to take that and run with it because we don't have a whole lot of that. And how can we expect to grow without something to show for it? Um, we also have a pretty big fan base that has been accumulating from different families and friends and other teams. And I think giving them a way to show off, you know, that they know us, get, like let people ask questions. Uh, is a really good way to accomplish both of those goals. So we came out with some new merch uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we've gotten quite a few sales from that. I understand that this is a really tricky time to be asking people to buy things, but um, that'll be available all season. We might come out with some new things. So that's been a fun thing to take charge of as well. Good. Yeah, I love that idea, Caitlin, that how you're using – you know, your, your ability to then use social media to build your brand, build an identity, and then also connect, you know, with your fan base. And, and that obviously then can tie into recruitment there. So that's, that's an excellent piece there, particularly when you're then able to attract not only, new, not only a fan base following, but then get players from there. So have you looked at, um, have you been looking at uh, youth at all, whether it be, you know, schools, um, colleges, you mentioned their gyms, the, you know, what other areas have you looked at? Um, so we have a large couple of work bases in Madison that attract all different types of people. And um, one of them is a climbing gym, which tends to really be an athletic bunch. So we've been kind of like 
scouring that, looking for places we could hang up a poster. Um, we were really hoping to like amp up the kickoff party and get some uh, promotion that way by the posters around town. We also have some guys that work at Epic, which is like a large healthcare place and a lot of young people that work there that just work a lot and need an outlet. Um, we also had a soccer team that we played in the off season. It was just a rec league, but we actually pulled a guy from our soccer team that's going to play with us. So we've been kind of reaching out in a lot of different ways, um, kind of conventional and unconventional. But I think um, in the long run, it's going to be pretty fruitful. Excellent. Awesome. So as far as your team goes, what would you say is the best part about the Wombats? Like, why should people join the Wombats? If you were to go out there and say, this is what makes our team great, what would it be? What would you tell people? I think it's, uh, we try to think of it as a social club. Um, it's more than just footy. It's like it's a group of friends. We hang out, we do other events, we go ice skating and we um, we'll have like a pub crawl and we'll do like random things. And it becomes like this tight knit unit of people. And we end up spending a lot of time together. We really get to know each other. And it's like a really fun uh, like family that gets created. And because it is so tight knit, I think sometimes we get on each other's nerves, but in the end it's, it's, you know, it's like any other family and we all come together and we <laughs> are fighting for the same cause. Definitely. And uh, yeah, I can, I definitely feel that way. Like, you know, it's almost like, you know, my footy friends versus my regular friends these days. It's like, you know, the, the relationships you forge in footy are genuinely special and it's huge, especially when it's a young club to be able to have that camaraderie and that mateship. And uh, uh, so uh, you guys are obviously in Madison and Milwaukee, which is a you know, pretty heavily populated area. And um, a lot of people here in the U.S. know Madison pretty well as a college town, university town. Uh, in terms of the Aussie expat community up there, is it pretty small? Is it decent sized? Because like we've had a lot of guests here on the podcast, like you know Baton Rouge, Richmond, smaller size cities where there may or may not be a ton of Australians in the region. So uh, what's your experience been in terms of getting Aussies involved compared to Americans? I've been surprised to find as many Australians um, in the area as, I, as I've come across. Um, we used to have like watch nights at this bar that we would go to after games or whatever. And we would always run into other Australians there, older Australians, younger Australians, just, and they were drawn to talking to us because they knew we were invested in watching the game and they, they knew like something was up. So uh, I was, I've been surprised at how many uh, Australians have been drawn to the Midwest and particularly Madison. Um, yeah. Nice. That's really cool. Um, I noticed that uh, or you and I are talking um, offline about how you had lost uh, two of your female players and how you'd really like to grow the game for women. And I think being in the position as president and as a female, you have that unique perspective to be able to draw more women to the game. Um, do you have any plans to kind of focus your efforts on recruiting women at all as well? Or what do you think is the best part about this game for women players? Um, so I don't have any specific focus for women, but this also isn't like specifically focused for men. I think any time that I want to set up like an informational table or our kickoff party or something where it's going to draw people, I think the main goal is that we want every and any interest. It doesn't matter if you've ever played before, if you have never touched a footy, like um, we just we just want someone who's eager and uh in the past our main female was Nafla Poff and she has moved since so we've lost her uh she's retired from the sport which is totally understandable but it's been really hard to fill her place she was like our lady wombat um and uh she always practiced with the guys and i think that might be a hard selling point in that we don't have enough 
women right now um, to even practice. It would have to be like with the guys, which I've done and it's okay, but <laughs> it's a little challenging at times. So uh, I don't know. I think that's definitely something we need to think about because I totally, I think there's a need for the woman presence in this sport. And I think the guys can get really blockheaded about things and it's good to have yeah. somebody <laughs> else there to kind of <laughs> mitigate, break it up. Um, and beyond that, the women that I've played with have been awesome and super strong and very like awesome teammates. So I'd love to bring something like that to the Wombats. Awesome, Kayla. I've, have you have you had much interest or crossover come from the uh, the rugby side there? Um, Madison's got a you know very well established rugby team, especially on the women's side, one of the oldest actually in the in the country. Um, has there been any? Have you seen any interest there? We actually compete with space uh, with them on those practice fields, so I think there has been a little bit of crossover. But in terms of you know trying to pull like the big fish to our little pond is kind of really tricky right now. Um, it is something that we've looked into and we have had an international rules game with the Gaelic boys that we're trying to kind of just keep, keep the waters calm, but possibly a couple of crossovers would be totally welcome. Yeah, the, the international rules game, I think works really well. We, we do that here in Austin. We do that on an annual basis and it not only helps uh, the the uh, the Cowboys here with their uh, with their push towards nationals, but helps us as well. So that's a that's a great initiative, a great idea, I think, for your for uh, your team. Yeah, um, here in LA, we actually um, for a while, like before I joined the Dragons, uh, we we would do some international rules matches. But then, like you know, uh, the Gaelic team started getting worried about injuries, and like you know, their their season runs parallel to ours, so we rarely had bye weeks in the same. Uh, in the same block. Uh, but a couple of years ago, um, the, the Orange County uh, Gaelic team, uh, we did a female um, it, sort of experimental women's footy game uh, um, with the Irish girls and the Dragons uh, women. And uh, it was like the first half would be Aussie rules and then the second half would be Gaelic. So like international rules, but like not entirely consistent, but it was really fun. And uh, the Gaelic guys couldn't have been more helpful. And y you never know in those types of situations because, like, they might get scared of, you know, player poaching and things like that. But, uh, yeah, having a, a really quality Gaelic side that can occasionally get together for uh, for whether it's, you know, social events or actual games, that's that's a really good asset to have. And, of course, they're in kind of a similar situation we are. Gaelic is one of the closest sports to footy and you know uh, in terms of uh, small clubs that need money and players you know they're kind of in the same boat but uh, but yeah that's really good and hopefully that continues hopefully you can get more Irish guys yeah. and girls down there and give it a crack. So I as a person that's kind of outside more and uh, doing more administrative side and not necessarily really big into playing, what is your favorite part about footy, especially being an American? I always like to ask people what they enjoy most about footy, either watching the game or actually playing the game. What has been your most enjoyable moments? Um, I think I have to say when a goal is scored, the action is Oh, it's just hilarious to me. The two, the double finger point, like, oh, I just love it. So that's probably it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my mom, uh, she thinks it looks really dorky. And I'm like, well, you know, they used to wear like white lab coats and top hats. I think that's a little stranger, you know? Anyone who's seen who's seen footy games from the 70s and 80s knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> and uh, speaking of which, uh, have you found a team to barrack for? Do you watch a lot of footy these days? I personally don't, but I'm kind of uh, along the Collingwood train because my boyfriend is a big Collingwood fan. <laughs> and the reason he's a Collingwood fan is because he knows he's not supposed to be a Collingwood fan. So, you know. Yeah. 
<laughs> One of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be self aware. Be self aware. Well, good. Yeah. Well, what is your favorite part about that you saw from the Wombats, let's say from the past season or so? What has been like either a highlight of a game or something you've witnessed that have been the best part of them? Uh, probably our win last year. We we just brought so many guys to Des Moines and we had an awesome game. It was kind of like off the cuff, like felt sort of last minute, but it all worked out and we ended up winning and it was like a huge team win. It just felt so great. We were all like on our, on our game that day. And I had also decided that day that I was going to take live video while also being asked to run water. So it was a, it was a challenge. <laughs> um, yeah. I didn't watch a lot of the game, but I felt, I felt like we all won. So it was, it was great. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was comp- I mean, it was a, very, nice. very much, I think a season for your team from what I, from what I've seen of the results there, you had that great win. You came very close to, to knocking off Chicago. Um, you, you've been you were fairly competitive in all the games you played. You had some great opposition against against Minnesota. Do you, have you found that's added to the the confidence of the team in terms of where you can look ahead for the next, you know, not just for this season when when we do have it, or I'm sure you know later in the year, but even moving forward into 2021. Yeah, I think absolutely. We have a lot of really great skill on our team, and then we also have a lot of the people that have been interested in the sport are so enthusiastic and um, like interested. They just want to get there and get trying and practicing. And even in this off season that we've kind of had extended off season, um, (laughs) all the guys that are maybe not so used to footy are getting out there and practicing their kicks and they're trying to, you know, better themselves. Um, as an athlete. So that's been really inspiring as well. Yeah, I reckon you guys get more competitive every time we see you. And of course, you know, here in LA, we're probably only going to see you guys at nationals. But yeah, it's really exciting. And again, you know, you've got Madison and Milwaukee right down the, the highway from each other. So in my opinion, there's no reason for the Wombats not to be, you know, consistent, competitive, winning side here in the USAFL. So I think you guys have a lot of ingredients to be consistently competitive and be a, a, a real contender. And obviously you guys are in Div 4 right now. Um, uh, at, what's the timeline, do you think, where you guys can get up to D3 or you know, eventually D2 someday or D1? W- what do you guys think is the, most, the best progression for you guys in terms of growing the club and being competitive in Div 4 so you can move up further? Yeah, I think we had really high hopes for this season, and we're kind of still waiting to see how that pans out. I'd hope within the next two seasons we could bump up a division just based on the commitment we have now, the kind of like uh, all-around athleticism that we've got. Um, if we if we can get that potential growth that I'm seeing, um, I think we have the potential to have a really stable team, and then that leads to wins. and moving up oh absolutely and i think um again i think you guys are in good stead right now with some great leadership at the helm and uh so in terms of uh heading forward i think you know there's no reason you guys can't move up eventually and i think you know based on what you guys are talking about what you guys are planning it's going to be a really fun journey and you know again if you want to talk about silver linings with this whole pandemic thing um Again, I think players are going to be hungrier than ever just to be out there again, just to compete and hit hard and and uh, have have a kick, have a crack. It's going to be really fun. And uh, we were talking to Patty Smallwood just the other day um, down in South America uh, with the Bogota Bulldogs. And he was saying, you know, that during this whole quarantine, all, all the players keep texting, you know, saying, like, how can we how can we train harder? What can we do? You want us to watch film? You know, everyone's keen. Everyone's eager. And I think, you know, once you guys are back, it's going to be a really fun journey. Yeah, we've we've actually come up with a wombat workout that we've been trying to keep the guys busy. Um, it just gives them a little bit of direction. I think me personally, I really lack the motivation to come up with a schedule and 
stick to it. But I think when, you know, the president or the coach gives you a schedule for a workout, it's a little bit more encouraging to do that. So uh, we've been, we've been staying pretty busy (laughs) and we've also been doing some uh, trick shot video kicks. So that's been keeping the guys entertained as they message the group about what they kicked that day in one try. Not one try. <laughs> awesome. Well, Kaylin, I think it's amazing that we have a, a female president or another one. Um, I think it's great that you've taken on that that head and that charge. And I hope we can get more female presidents in line. We definitely need it in the USAFL and throughout the league. So good on you for doing that and taking up that uh, for the Wombats. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Caitlin, you guys are doing a great job up there. And uh, yeah, we wish you the best of luck heading forward. And I'm sure we'll be hearing again from you guys in the future. So take care of yourselves up there and we wish you the best. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Caitlin. Have a good one. You too. Outside 50 is brought to you with the help of Play Aussie USA. Play Aussie is the only place in the USA you can buy the famous Sheeran football, a proud sponsor of the USAFL. Visit them at playaussie.com.